There is a lot of information out there when it comes to exercise and fitness. And it can get kind of confusing, you know, what exercises do I do? How much do I do them? When do I do them? But there are a few key elements or fundamental principles that if you keep these in mind, it'll help you get the most out of your workout. So if you are feeling motivated to work out, but you are unsure about where to begin or what to do, this video is for you. Before you jump into any exercise or exercise program, it is so important that you wake up your sleepy or your lazy muscles. Now, these might be muscles that maybe haven't been used in a while or muscles that maybe there was an injury in that area. So your brain maybe has some difficulty speaking with those muscles. It happens. But what's most important is that we activate these muscles we wake them up so that they are ready to do their job so that when we are doing those squats or those lunges or those push-ups the proper muscles are firing and activating because when you jump into a workout without having those muscles activated or those muscles awake there's a couple things a couple problems you can run into number one you'll fall into your habitual patterns of movement. So those muscles that are already strong or already super activated, they'll start to compensate for those sleepy muscles. And what I think is most important is preventing injury. Because when we get those muscles to do their job properly, and usually we're talking about stabilizing muscles, which help to stabilize the joint, then we are protecting the joint from getting injured or protecting the muscle from getting pulled in a weird way. And I really think that's most important because what really sucks is when you're feeling motivated to work out and your mind is in the right place, but then, you know, your body is hurting or your body gets injured. I believe that it is important that your exercise doesn't stress you, but it empowers you. And when you learn to prepare your body for your workout and you have a strategy to prepare your body to have the most effective and efficient workout, then you're setting yourself up for success and for an, a fitness program, a, a workout that really empowers you to feel strong in your body. So what can we do? What can we do to prevent injury and to activate the right muscles to prepare for our workout? Well, first thing, I think it's important to go back to what probably all our PE teachers told us is that you need to warm up. Yes, 100% you need to warm up. And what I'm going to show you in this video, the activation exercise can be included in your warm up. And I'll show you how to do that. And if you need guidance on a warm up, I'll put a link in the description to this video of a quick 10 minute workout that works, a uh, 10 minute warm up that works through different joints and warming things up. And then also, I like to use foam rolling, just a quick foam roll through the body as part of my warm up, just to help relieve any sort of super tight muscle tension or anything like that and I'll put a link in the description below for that and the second way we can prepare for our workouts and prevent injury is what this video is all about activation having a few techniques a few exercises a strategy to activate those sleepy or lazy muscles before you go lift weights or before you do a more intense workout and when it comes to activation, it comes to an exercise fundamental, which is your mind-body connection. The only reason I can move my arm is because my brain is talking to my body to move my arm. And the only reason my body is going to activate a certain muscle is if I get my brain to talk to that muscle. So these activation exercises that I'm going to show you is really to get your brain to talk to your body. And whenever you're moving your body, whenever you're working out, we want to remember that is that the only reason I'm moving my body is because my brain is talking to my body and being conscious and aware of that is going to help you move more safely, preventing injury and more effectively right building those muscles that you want to really build so take a big breath feel your body <sighs> and I'm going to show you kind of the the framework the the strategy that I set up for myself and all my clients when preparing to work out if you're getting ready to work out there's a few things you want to think about number one is what muscles are you going to work out 
right? This workout you're about to do, is it a full body workout? Is it a lower body workout, upper body? Are you targeting one muscle group? Things like that. So if I'm targeting my lower body and I really want to target my glutes, right? This is super common. We want to, you know, strengthen our glutes, especially if we've been sitting all day. We're sitting on the glutes. They're not firing. They're not awake. And so when I go to work my glutes, I want to get my brain to talk to them and wake them up. Right? So that's number one is really what are you trying to work? Is it upper body? Are you trying to strengthen those upper back muscles? What do you do? You got to have some activation for that specific body part or specific muscle or muscle group. And then keeping in mind what are your specific lazy or sleepy muscles? Right, we all have, there's a couple reasons that muscles get lazy. You know, we talked about maybe they just haven't been used in a while. Um, and also like injury. So if I have, or a past injury, if I have an area in my body that maybe has some built up scar tissue where that area is really tight, I have to be aware of that. And that tight area might compensate. It's gonna create a habitual pattern of movement that might restrict me in activating the muscle that I wanna activate. So when I'm preparing for my workout, I keep that in mind. Do I have an injury that I need to, an old injury, maybe built up scar tissue, an extra, and it might not be an injury, maybe just a tight area that I need to address before I do my workout. That's another thing to keep in mind as you are preparing for your workout. And then finally, adding in the proper activation exercises to wake up the areas you are about to work out. And before we get into these activation exercises for specific body parts, remember, you know your body best. And so taking your time to really connect with your body, it might be some slow, deep breathing. If you need to pause the video and repeat the exercises multiple times, that's okay. In fact, I want you to do that. I want you to take what you learn from this video and then apply it to fit you and your specific needs and your specific goals. All right, let's get started with the core muscles, the abdominal muscles. This is an area of the body that majority of us can use a little bit of help activating. Now, if the core is not doing its job, where might we feel the pain or the compensation? Usually it's the lower back. Our body kind of works in opposites like this. So if my front, if my core is not doing, you know, the supporting, the activating that I want it to do, usually it'll be the other side of the body. So in this case, the back side of the body will start to compensate. So I might feel pain there. Um, and the core, since it's the center of our body and it supports pretty much every movement that we do, if it's not doing its job, if it's not awake and turned on, then we can start to feel aches, pains, compensations in pretty much any area of our body. So let's get into how do we activate the core. The most important thing to remember when it comes to core, activating your core, doing core work, is drawing the core in. Right? We do not want to push the belly out. We want to draw the belly in. That is where we get the support. Our abdominal muscles, which pretty much go from like our armpits to our hips, right? There's this whole area wraps around the trunk. They work like a built-in corset. They draw in to support, okay? So how do we do that? Well, number one is our breath. And so let's practice a few breaths just to get this area, get the breath in this area, because sometimes that is the hardest part. So you can sit down in your chair, you can stand up, you can sit like me, however you want to do this. You're going to take a big inhale and let the abdomen expand like you're filling up a big balloon. And then exhale like you're exhaling through a straw, just like that. And we want to feel the drawing in. And it might be very subtle, and that's okay. That's where we start. So we inhale and we let it expand. And then we exhale and we draw it in. <sighs> then one more time, inhale, we expand. And it's not just the front, but it's also the rib cage, the back and the sides here. And then you exhale and it draws in. Because remember, those muscles, they go all the way around. It's not just in the front. So now that you've got your breath like that, you understand as you exhale, this is where we get this drawing in. And it's the drawing in is where we get the core activation. 
Then we can throw in a few exercises to kind of wake those muscles up. So one of the exercises that I really like is a V-sit. And I like to hold either a yoga block or you can use a pillow, hold something in between my thighs. So I just hug it in between my thighs. And when we get those inner thighs to activate, that is another little trick to help turn the lower abdominals on. So you're hugging something in between your thighs and you can reach those arms out and we want the shoulders down because we remember the abs kind of come up to the armpits. So if we pull the shoulders down, that's going to help activate more of the obliques and then you're going to lean back <sighs> and you're just going to make sure that your belly is drawing in. You're not pushing it out. OK, now you might need to do this a couple times. I like to inhale as I sit up, exhale as I lean back, <sighs> inhale. And exhale. And you can do this with me. It's like, okay, what is she talking about here? Am I feeling that core connection? And then once you get the hang of it, I want you to hold. Practice holding. Because when you're in the gym and you're you know, lifting weights and you're doing things, you're going to have to hold it in. And you might say, okay, well, how do I hold my f the front of my belly in and inhale? Well, you got to inhale into the back and sides of the ribs. So here, I might even kind of bring my chest down just a little bit so I can feel the back of my ribs and I want to inhale back here. And then exhale with a little bit of sound. I like to exhale through a straw and I pull the belly in. And at the same time, I'm squeezing my inner thighs, thinking about, okay, this zipper from inner thighs to pelvic floor to lower belly all the way to the front of my ribs. I zip it up. <sighs> And I hold here for about 30 seconds, maybe a minute. And I might relax my neck and be like, okay, get the tension out of my head, get the tension out of my face, and put all that energy into my core. And then you can come up and you, okay, you take a breath. But then you're getting your mind to talk to the core muscles. So that's one exercise I like to do is that V-sit kind of just holding it. And another way to activate the core, and sometimes, and it just depends on you, you might find this easier, is to lay down on your back. Because when we're on our backs, now we have the floor beneath us as a tactile cue to really get our back of our ribs to press down and get our core to draw down towards the floor. Now, ideally, you want to keep your pelvis as neutral as possible. And we can actually, you know, put this block off to the side. Mm. So there should be a little small space, a small arch through your lower back. We call that the lumbar curve, and that's natural, right? I want there to be a curve there, but I don't want to flare my ribs, which a lot of us do is we like our ribs go up here, but we have abs that attach into the ribs. So we got to get the ribs down, and the floor is this really good tactile cue to get those ribs down. Now here, I put my hands on my belly. I take a big breath into the back and sides of my ribs. And then as I exhale, I want to draw the core in. <sighs> Feel that core set wrapping around between ribs and hips, hugging in. And then I'm going to practice lifting one leg. And then I slowly lower. And then I exhale. I feel the core. And then I lift the other leg. And then I lower and I inhale. And then exhale, I lift a leg. So we have this laying on our backs doing alternating leg lifts, drawing the core in. <sighs> and notice how my hands are touching the ribs, they're touching my hips. I might even you know, move them to the sides, move them to the front. And I'm making sure as I do these leg lifts that I'm not wobbling side to side. <sighs> <sighs> I'm keeping my hips and my ribs very, very stable. And I'm drawing the belly down. I'm not pushing the belly up. <sighs> And then if I get really good at these alternating leg lifts, what I want to practice is holding both of my legs up as I keep my core drawing in. And I would hold here for about a minute, breathing into the back of the ribs. And I know, you know, sometimes people are like, well, that's boring. But what's worse is hurting your lower back when you go to work out. And so here on the floor, just taking a minute to breathe, to draw the core in, activate it, turn it on. Even me, I have a pretty strong core, but holding my legs, I can still get a great workout. I can still get great activation holding this position. There's nothing wrong with it. <sighs> and then the same thing, if you wanted to practice, you wanted more, and you're going into more, let's say, crunches or oblique crunches, and you want to flex the upper body up. It's the same idea. When I flex up, I want to make sure I'm not pushing my belly out. I'm drawing my belly in. Hmm, feeling the ribs sliding down. 
and then you release <sighs> and you take a big breath. So next exercise is a breathing exercise. So you can do this sitting or standing. Sometimes um, if I'm going to the gym, let's say, I sit in my car before I walk into the gym and I do this breathing exercise to make sure that my mind is talking to my abdominal muscles. And in the yoga world, we call this a breath of fire, right? And it's a pumping of the belly. So I, uh, I'm going to turn sideways so you can kind of see that my belly is going to move here. <sighs> And if you want to practice with me, you can. We'll just do a very small bit here. Take a big inhale, right? Let the abdomen expand. And then it's going to be quick exhales. <laughs> and here you're making a little sound like that, but you're snapping, snapping the belly back. And while I do this, while I pump my belly, it's kind of hard to talk and pump the belly, but I'm lifting my pelvic floor muscles, <sighs> keeping the tension out of my neck and shoulders. <sighs> <sighs> and you'll notice after about 30 seconds of that, you'll get some heat in the belly and those core muscles are activating, they're turning on. And finally, another core activation exercise that I like to do is to practice my hip hinge. I'm gonna show you from a kneeling position so let's say I'm kneeling on my knees. I like to put my pinky fingers into my hip creases here. And then I fold in half. And I make sure that my pinky fingers kind of disappear into that hip crease, right? And the difference, if I'm not hinging, that was a hip hinge, I would be rounding. And this rounding is terrible for your lower back. So I want to karate chop the hips. <sighs> fold, my back is straight, and then I hold this position, drawing the core in. I'm not pushing it out, right? That's what it looks like if you're pushing it out. I'm drawing it in, <sighs> and I hold this position. <sighs> so I'm, this is a kind of, if you're going to do any deadlifts or if you're going to do squats, you need a hip hinge, but you need your core to engage when you hip hinge. And so practicing in your warm-up and your activation, okay, can I hold the hip hinge? And then maybe you come up and then hip hinge, draw the core in. And you can do that same thing from standing. I know my body's cut off, but I can do the same thing. Hip hinge, <sighs> draw the core in, make sure I'm not pushing it out, and then I come up. <sighs> All right, well, I hope those between those four exercises that gives you some tools in your toolbox to help you turn your core on before you go work out. Now let's get into another area of the body that can be often sleepy or lazy is our glutes, our booty muscles. And a lot of the times those muscles are not doing their job because most of us spend a lot of the day sitting. I do it too, right? We're sitting at the computer or we're sitting driving, whatever it is. But those booty muscles, if we're sitting, they're not active. We're sitting on them. So Glutes are uh, an area that definitely doing a little bit of activation is going to help your workout so much. And if the glutes aren't doing their job, you're going to feel maybe pain in the knees or the lower back, right? You'll start to compensate in other areas. Maybe you sometimes also is that one side might be active and the other not. And so the right to left dialogue, what's happening there? So these are a few exercises, some activation techniques you can do to turn on those glutes. Glute amnesia is definitely a thing, especially those of us that tend to be sitting all day, which most of us do. That's just kind of our world that we live in right now. So we have to be proactive about waking those booty muscles up. Now, one of my favorite ways to wake up the butt muscles is to do Pilates sideline legs. Uh, I love Pilates because Pilates is all about waking up those smaller, deeper stabilizer muscles. And this sideline position is definitely <coughs> one of the most effective ways to do that. But we have things like clamshells, right? Holding your pelvis stable while you pull the knee up to the sky and you feel the booty work. And then you go from clamshells, you extend that leg and you do some lift and lower. Right, keeping the pelvis stable, keeping the core engaged, moving the leg without moving the hips is going to turn all those deep stabilizers on. And then I like things like stomp, where the knee comes up and you stomp. Right, so this is a single leg variation of what you would be doing in a squat position. Learning to hold your pelvis level, 
activate the butt muscle and push, just like you would be you know, in a squat position. And then we finish up with some circles, right? The hip joint uh, loves circumduction, is going in a big circle. And so the sideline legs really takes the hip joint in all that different range, getting all those different muscles to turn on. So those are our Pilates sideline legs, and there is a link in the description below if you want to follow along with those exercises. Another Pilates move that I find very effective in waking up your glutes, you don't need any equipment, but is laying on your belly. So when you lay on your belly, because these butt muscles, they do hip extension, which looks like this. I have my leg going back behind me. So to activate the muscles, I want to do the movement that that muscle does, right? that my butt does hip extension. So I want to move my leg in hip extension to activate that muscle. So laying on your belly, you can do things like lifting a leg. You could do one at a time. You could do both at the same time. I kind of like one at a time because then I can really focus and I can get my mind to talk to that side, especially if you have one side that's more active than the other, which you probably do. I do too. So that's single leg hip extensions, just like this, super simple. The other move I like to do here is froggers. So you bend the knees, you bring the heels together, you're pushing your hips down, and then you lift the knees. Super important that you're keeping your lower back quiet, right? There's no dumping into the lower back. There's just turning the butt muscles on. <sighs> and I'd like to do about 10. I do about 10, I think, is a really good number to get your brain to talk to those muscles. Now, after you do these laying on your belly activation exercises, make sure you give yourself a child's pose to release your lower back. And finally, for the glutes, I like to use a booty band to help turn on the glute muscles. And there's lots of different ways you can do this. You can, uh, there's lots of different ways you can do this. So I can use my booty band and I can do my clamshells on my side, what we just did with our Pilates sign line legs. But now I add a band. It's going to add a little bit more. Right? This is a great exercise. <sighs> Another way to use your band is to do the hip extensions that we were doing on our bellies, but you can do them standing. So if my hand's on a wall, and I know my head's cut off, but we'll just go with it here. We can put the band around our ankles and then do hip extension. Hip extension. Get that butt muscle to turn on. <sighs> right, you do about 10 each side. And then finally, what you can do is just sidewalks. <sighs> Making sure the knees and the toes are always pointing in the same direction. And just little lateral walks like this. <sighs> I hope that helps. Use a band if you'd like. Do your Pilates legs, but you got to get those sleepy glute muscles, those lazy glute muscles to turn on before you do your squats or your lunges or your deadlifts, whatever it is. And finally, another area that often is sleepy or lazy or just doesn't get used often is our upper back muscles. And we can run into problems, so we go to do our workout and we're doing arm exercises, we're doing overhead presses, or we're using the cable machine and doing lat pulls, uh, push-ups, pull-ups, planks, right? Using our upper body. So before you go to the gym and before you start those more intense exercises, use these exercises to help get the scapula to move and put the scapula, the shoulder blades, in the right area in a stable position. Get the muscles around the shoulder blades to stabilize those shoulder blades and then go into those more intense exercises. When it comes to working out the muscles in your upper body or your upper back or even mid back, uh, the first thing you want to keep in mind is getting your shoulder blades, your scapula, to move, to slide and glide. Oftentimes, especially if our posture is starting to round, which happens a lot, is the scapula kind of gets stiff. They get stuck onto the back. And so first thing in activation for your upper body is getting your scapula to move. And my favorite way to do that is to do it on my belly. So laying on my belly, arms down by my sides, I'm gonna roll my shoulders up and back, wide smiling collarbone, feeling the muscles in between the shoulder blades and the spine. And then if I want more, I can lift my arms and reach back, right? And I would release, and then I do it again. Get my shoulder blades to move, put them in the right spot, and then lift.
and then release. And you can try arms out to the sides. Sh scapula back and down, and then maybe lift the arms, rotate the thumbs up. We call these scapula isolations. And then release, and you roll back and down. And then you lift and release. So we have three different arm positions in this for scapula isolation. So the first one was down by the side. We can call this I, like the letter I. And then we have T, arms out to the sides. And then we have Y, like a capital Y, like a Y shape, arms up. And this one's the most difficult. Y is the most difficult. Rolling the shoulders back and down, and then you can try to lift your arms, keeping those shoulders out of the ears, and then you release. And then you loop them back and down, plenty of space between ear and shoulder. That's the idea. And then you lift. And if two arms is too difficult, lift one and lower. And then the other and lower and then release. Ooh. And after you do those, take a quick child's pose, stretch it out, and then you come on up. <coughs> so that's m the first part when it comes to upper body is getting the shoulder blades to glide. Now a fundamental to think about when it comes to the upper body, upper body exercise, the shoulders, when they are uh, lifted up like this, right, and to go ahead and do that while you watch me lift, this is a very unstable position for the shoulders. So we need to make sure all our upper body exercises that we pull them down. And do that. As you pull your shoulders down, you want to feel, right, feel your muscles right here, this armpit kind of side that pull the shoulder blade down. And that's the position that I want my shoulder blades in when I'm going to do any weight bearing or loading. I want to make sure that I can pull them down. Then I do the hardest part of the exercise. Now, you can use a band to help you activate those muscles. One way I like to use a band, and I think the band is very, very effective here. And this is a light band, not a heavy band, super light. And you can make a heavy band lighter by just giving yourself more slack in the middle. But you hold on to that band about shoulder distance. You make sure your shoulder blades are down. And then you pull, drawing the shoulder blades back, and then a slow release. These are our band pull-aparts. And I'll show you from, uh, so you can see my back here. So arms out, I shoulders down, and then I pull. And I would do about 10 of these. Give it a good squeeze, and then slow release. And then another way I can activate is arms overhead. Let's say I'm going to do a pull-up or I'm going to do a lat pull. I'm going to make sure shoulders are down. And one arm at a time, I want to pull. Usually it's easier for our brains to talk to one arm than it is to talk to both at the same time. And I want to feel, what I want to feel is my armpit muscle, my tricep, and feel my shoulder blade down. That's the most important part when I'm doing an exercise that causes this movement is my shoulder blade down. <sighs> All right, so you can use your band to help you activate those muscles, but just remember that fundamental. It's down, not creeping those shoulders up. So I hope that helps. Please take what you learned here in this video and fine tune it. Pick the exercises that feel best for you, that get your muscles to turn on, and use them as you need them. If you're going to work out, you're going to do your workout. One, you need to think about what muscles or what exercises are you going to be doing in that workout. What are those exercises, what muscle groups are those exercises supposed to be targeting? And then thinking about what areas in your specific body might need some extra love, some extra attention. Do you have tight areas that you need to foam roll to loosen up that muscle tissue? Do you have an old injury that maybe you need to spend some time on that joint, get that joint to move a little bit? Um, and then throwing in those activation exercises that you know will allow, get your brain to talk to that muscle or muscle group or area of your body. And then you can step into your strength workout and have the most effective workout that you possibly can. We want our exercise to empower us, to make us feel strong and vital in our bodies. So use what you learned from this video cater it, mold it, make it work for you. Comment below if you have any questions. I'll try to answer back the best that I can. And I hope that this supports you in building strength and vitality in your body.